Hey guys, what's up? And welcome back to another Coffee Talk podcast. For today, we're going to be doing an espresso brew. And I feel like I'm kind of reiterating myself now with each of these episodes, but because we're still in the groundbreaking, I think it's the fifth or fourth espresso brew. I'll explain one more time. Espresso brews are motivational, gist, and adulting content. So everything that, if you are into energies at all, think solar energy, think performance, like productivity, like all of that, like your A game. I want to talk about burnout and productivity. And I don't know exactly how I'm going to title this podcast yet because it's really a 50 50 split between those things. But the whole concept behind what is burnout and why we're burning out and why we need to stop trying to be so productive, which is interesting because I feel like even myself, I'm so guilty of making tons of content that are meant to motivate you to be more productive. And so I've understood that I myself have played a role in the mess of today's society being obsessed with productivity and lack of sleep and almost like the hustle, you know what I mean? And the more that I look into it and the more that I've even just experienced that entire feeling for myself, the more I understand how unhealthy it actually is, at least again, in my experience and in my opinion. So when I was looking up, I, I do a bit of research for most of the coffee talks, especially if I'm gonna be talking about more symptomatic things or just to gain a little bit more knowledge outside of my own experience. So when I was looking up burnout, I started to dip in and do a little bit of research on productivity and how to slow down your life a little bit and what are the signs of burnout because that was one of the main things I realized when I was away on my trip to Bali. One of the really good friends that I met there named Lynette, we were having this discussion and I was explaining to her that I feel like I've been burnt out for a long time and she was like, well, when was the last time you took a trip and you just didn't film it or didn't record it or didn't work? And the truth was that I, I don't, I haven't, I've never done that. I started traveling pretty much when I started doing YouTube and I've documented every trip, which I love to do. I love to document, but it slowly started to turn into work each time because then I'm like, I put this pressure on myself or like this expectation anyway unrelated to the fact that I just realized that I'll have doses of motivation and doses of inspiration. And you might notice this too, but my default mode is kind of permanently, most of the times, a little bit more burnt out. Specifically, I would say before 2020, like leading up to 2020. And now I'm trying to heal that burnout and stop shaving extra years off the end of my life. Because that's the thing with burnout is that you won't notice it in the here and now as much. You might with the symptoms, but you'll notice it more or will notice it more as we get older if we don't do something about it now. So here are some symptoms that you might experience if you yourself are feeling a little burnt out. First and foremost is waking up and feeling like you aren't yourself or you can't function unless you have coffee or caffeine. And that was like the biggest symptom I had for the longest time. So I'm on my second month of being caffeine free now and that struggle is still very real. The other ones are waking up after, even if you've had a full night's sleep and still feeling sleepless or restless or tired, you know what I mean? Other symptoms include feeling exhausted or like lethargic, but also wired. So tired, but wired. You're wanting to sleep, but you can't because you're so, like your body is just like, it feels like you should be doing things. Lacking a sense of joy, lacking a sense of just overall like positivity, like feeling like you might be a little bit more negative or feeling a little bit more lackluster or dull throughout the day. Feeling like you can't turn off or switch off. And, and again, my experience, this is one of the biggest ones that I'm still struggling with is feeling like I can't just turn off. Do you know that feeling where even if you have nothing to do, even if nothing is actually actively going on around you or in front of you, you might find this even when you meditate, just not being able to turn off, not being able to fully relax into the present moment because you're in such an activated state or an activated exhausted state. And then another really big symptom is not being able to focus or lacking the ability to concentrate. So if you have to sit down and do something, you're finding it really hard to focus, you're finding it really hard to like tune in to what you need to do, but then at the same time you're feeling 
like you're tired and restless, but you're feeling agitated and like you should be doing things, you know? So those are all symptoms. But again, just like anything in life, your experience might be something totally different or a combination of a few of those things. Everybody's going to experience burnout differently. And if I were to give advice in terms of how to figure out if you fall into the burnout category or if you're getting close to bridging that gap is to slow down enough or even just become aware of yourself. Because when you become aware of when you're experiencing any of these symptoms, let alone just experiencing your experience with life in general, you're able to then pinpoint when these things are happening or when they start to happen. So even for myself, I know that I haven't picked back up caffeine, for instance, and I know that Okay, I'm noticing that I have better ability to focus and concentrate and slow down when I talk, but I'm still feeling that sense of not being able to turn off and just become aware of it. You don't have to fix it because again, that feeds into that I need to do something mentality. It's just a matter of becoming aware, creating space for it, which sounds so lovely and so nice, but it's not always that easy. And then just, yeah, just noticing if you experience those symptoms so then you can actually start to actively do something about them in a healthy way. So here's the thing, multitasking is a myth. And growing up, okay, I grew up with an older sister who is incredible at multitasking. She can do like five things at once and it always used to blow my mind because I am just so not like that. I am like, if I sometimes get overwhelmed trying to do one thing that has like five tasks, you know, one project with five little tasks underneath it. And I'm like, I'm overwhelmed. It's too much. It's too much. For, it's too many places for my brain to try and be. My brain likes to be in one place. And more than that, my brain doesn't like to have rules or to be tied down by anything. It likes to free roam, you know? So I always used to just admire my sister's ability to do so many different things, to be in so many places mentally at once. But at the same time, when you actually look into the science behind multitasking and whether it's a truth or a myth, it is actually a myth. It's just the brain's ability to be very efficient for some, but also not for others at jumping from task to task. So if you are a good multitasker, then you just basically have sharpened the ability for your brain to jump back and forth between things really quickly. And if you're not a great multitasker, then that means that your brain isn't as efficient at jumping back and forth between things quickly, which is totally cool too, because realizing that, I feel like that makes sense in so many ways because when you are multitasking, even the fact now that I'm speaking to you, I'm looking at a camera, I'm becoming aware of my notes. My brain is able to work through the amount of things going on because this is pretty easy, right? But if I were to be trying to film a video, trying to write out a recipe for somebody and also trying to, I don't know, brush my dog. I don't know why those two things came to mind, but that would just, that would start to burn my brain or burn my energy out because my brain is trying to be tuned into what I'm doing be answering somebody and call back, you know, instructions for something as well as using the mobility function of brushing my dog. That's a really weird example, but it's just the brain's ability to jump back and forth very quickly, but it still can only think of one thing at a time. And so some people get really good at this and some people just don't. Here's where it gets tricky. Our brains haven't had the time to catch up with where humans have basically evolutionized to. So our brains and our bodies were made to be able to respond to the type of stresses that would mean life or death, and they would be very periodic. So not every day you would be feeling like life or death threats. You would just maybe once a season run into a saber toothed tiger or you know, have to climb or scale up a mountain to get food for the day or something. And that would be your like periodic fight or flight moment where your brain would really have to hyper focus and put all of its energy forward in keeping you safe and working. And now the world that we live in today, we're trying to do so many different things at once, but not only that, we are retaining and receiving so much information, even just from scrolling through our phones and even in today's world with what's going on right now. Like it is no wonder that so many people are experiencing higher levels of anxiety right now because this is not the type of saber toothed tiger threat. This is, we're, we're experiencing very minor to grand scale threats, but there's multiple like threats in a given day. And then when you multiply that by how many days are in a year and you add a few of those years up, it's no wonder that by the time 
people turn into teenagers and then move into adulthood, we're all feeling burnt out or the mass majority of us are because our brains and our bodies haven't had the time to catch up with the amount of minute threats that come from even just getting an email that you know is going to stress you out or comparison is the perfect example especially in today's world with social media and speaking myself as a female like you can go online and if you're not aware of yourself you can compare your body you can compare your lifestyle and, and men too actually to what's going on online and you would not have ever even known what all of these other people were doing if it weren't for technology and social media but suddenly now there's that threat of i have to do more i have to be better i have to constantly better myself and sharpen myself and make myself the best absolute version of myself because it seems like that's what everybody else is doing and even that is a threat to your brain because that means that you're not safe where you are as you are and that you need to do to be able to be and that is basically where the root in my opinion of burnout especially in today's world is starting so let's talk about the productivity trap and by that I mean being productive for productivity's sake. So again, I am so, so guilty of this, of adding things to my to-do list that don't need to be on my to-do list just because it feels good to check it off. It feels good to feel productive. And again, that makes sense. It, it's almost like a, a hit of dopamine each time you check something off your to-do list. But a lot of the times we're loading up our to-do lists and we're doing things because we feel like we have to, or we feel like we should without actually asking ourselves, why are we doing this? When you get honest with yourself, like really painfully honest with yourself, if you were to write down the things that you do every single day and put a little dash beside it and just ask yourself, why am I doing this? A lot of the answers that you might find could shock you. For instance, even just this year, I've been mapping out the projects that I want to work on this year. And I had so many ideas and so many just like things that I could see just flourishing and doing so well. But then when I asked myself about each and every one of those projects, why am I doing this? If the answers were because I should, or because that's, that's what another successful person is doing, or that's what made this business do really well. That's not a good enough answer. That doesn't align deep enough with you that when push comes to shove and your plate gets full, you're going to feel overwhelmed, you're gonna feel overworked, and you're still gonna be trying to do something that you really don't need to be doing. And this is a hard thing to do again because I do think that we live in a world that can be a little excessive and we all feel like we need to like travel the world and write 10 books and learn six languages by the time we're like 30 um, and just live these very heightened best versions of ourselves. And I think that that's a double-edged sword because it's always good to better yourself, but not at the extent of literally draining yourself. And so when it comes to projects or ideas, or if you've got like six different book ideas or a bunch of business ideas that you know would all do well. You can't do 10 things really well. It's better for you to do one thing with all of your heart, all of your focus. And that's my issue that I'm dealing with right now with even projects is being like, okay, what projects am I doing? Because that activates something deep in my core. That is me feeling like I'm passionate about this project rather than feeling like it's just a successful venture. And it's a hard thing to do because you really have to break between your ego in a lot of ways, like what looks good on paper versus what feels good inside. And a lot of, a lot of the times we don't want to be honest about those things, but it's only hurting you if you're not. And nobody needs to know your answers or what ideas you never saw through. It's just a matter of being honest with yourself because that's the person that's going to benefit or hurt at the end of the day. So all of the things that you're loading onto your plate, every yes that you give, ask yourself why first, because before you say yes and commit, you want to make sure that the things that you're doing and the productivity that you're signing up, the producing you're signing up for, because you're saying yes to producing an outcome, that you're saying yes because that outcome is deeply rooted into your values, is deeply rooted into your passions, and is deeply rooted into what's going to make you feel good. Because if it's deeply rooted into just anything surface level or anything that maybe somebody else would like or somebody else would deem successful or because what other people would think is really cool, then that's when we're taking on too much for the wrong reasons and splitting ourselves into a million pieces for what? A really easy way to do this is to redefine what you believe success to be. So success is 
dot, dot, dot. And answer that, like finish that sentence in your own way, because that will become your value when it comes to success. So when there is an opportunity or a project or an idea, you can ask yourself, okay, if success is this, then what would create success with that? So I'll give you an example, okay? I would say more than anything, success is peaceful happiness, like inner peace to me, I think is the highest form of success that I've come across in my life is people that just seem to be so grounded and at peace with themselves. And yeah, that includes happiness, but even if they're just in the in-betweens of life, because you can't be happy all the time, that to me is success. So when I think about, let's say a book idea, and then I'm like, okay, I like this book idea, like blah, 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 blah. Will writing this make me feel happy? Will writing this deem me to feel inner peace by the end of this? Or am I writing this just because it's a cool idea that no one's done before and I want that novelty? And so things like that are hard questions to ask yourself because then you really have to either let it go or if you're not honest with yourself, take it on and then end up being overwhelmed. But it's that idea of success is dot, dot, dot and define what success means to you so that you can use that as your backbone when you start to make decisions or you start to clear the way of things that are burning you out. The other part of the productivity trap is believing that your self-worth is based on your productivity and your ability to do things. This is a concept that I've worked through with my therapist a little bit and it's one of those things that I think in the last year or so has really helped me come full circle to where I am today because I didn't realize for the longest time that my subconscious had basically been so wired to believe that I was only worth what I could accomplish. So the more I accomplished, the more I would feel worthy or I would feel a sense of self-worth but it was crazy because I couldn't understand why with each accomplishment, I almost would just dust it under the rug and just be zoned in on the next thing I wanted to do because I was basically running away from my own feelings of not feeling good enough and it had nothing to do with anybody else or the projects or the things that I was trying to accomplish and do and everything to do with not wanting to face that truth that I didn't feel like I was allowed to be worthy or I didn't feel good enough unless I was doing, producing, creating, accomplishing and bettering myself. Like it wasn't okay for me to just be and do nothing. And I still struggle with that. And you might relate to that in some ways as well, because again, I think that that's a very common thing going on in today's world is that if you're not posting your life, like every second of your life to social media, if you're not going on the newest, craziest trip, if you're not wearing the coolest clothes, if you're not bettering yourself, if you're not living the best version of your life, that you're, you don't matter and that's not the truth, but it is definitely a very unfortunate side effect, I think, of a lot of the things that come with social media and, and unintentional comparison of one life to another. And I don't think that's social media's fault. I think that's more just the combination of how our brains work. And then again, not being able to catch up with where technology is today. So we're not able to differentiate when those things are happening. And these truths and these things download very subtly into our subconscious because I never ever woke up one day and thought, you know, I have to do 10 million things or else I am not valuable. There was never a conscious decision for that. It just slowly embedded itself as I got older that I have to accomplish, I have to do, I have to produce, and I have to be successful in order to feel valuable. And it's not true. There is a loophole or a wormhole, if you will, that I, I feel like I've found and I'll share it. And that is the ability to define your purpose with what you're doing. And I think that when you start to ask yourself what your purpose is, or maybe you already know what it is, if you keep it very, very bold and highlighted and just strong at the top of your mind, then you're able to beat that little sidestep derail that happens. And you can define your purpose in nearly anything. It doesn't need to be one purpose for your whole life, which I think can be daunting sometimes is to think that you need to know what your purpose is from now until you grow old. You don't, you can have a purpose for the day. You can have a purpose for the week. You can have a purposeful project. You can have a purposeful year. But if you know what your purpose is when you say yes, or you commit to anything, then you're able to fall back on that purpose when you start to feel that sense of, okay, this needs to happen or 
when life starts to get in the way and, and show you a different route or take you a different way than you expected. Basically when your expectations don't go as planned, as long as you have your purpose, then it doesn't really matter because you're not basing your value or your worth on your outcome. You're basing it on your purpose and you can always come back to that purpose. So for instance, my purpose when I create is to be off, be honest and to be authentic and to make people feel good about themselves. And even if I don't make the best video performance wise, I don't feel like I failed as long as I've made one person feel good about themselves, as long as I feel like I was honest and as long as I feel like I was being authentically myself, then that was a win. And my value is no longer based on how well that video performs. It's on if I stayed true to my purpose. And again, that was just one example, which is super easy for me to recall because again, that's, that fits into my own life theme, but there are so many ways that you can find purpose in your own life theme. And so that you're not basing your value and your worth off of anybody's ability to love you over your ability to be successful or to get straight A's in school or to make a lot of money or to drive the fanciest car because your purpose will be deeper than that and it'll be more long-standing than such material things. You know what I mean? I can also say when you have a strong purpose that is deeply rooted in yourself that productivity tends to then flow into a flow-like state rather than feeling like a forced state. So when you wake up and you have to answer emails, which nobody wants to do, but you know that your purpose is to be able to run a business that makes people feel good about themselves and that fits into your purpose. And it's no longer like, okay, I need to be, I don't know, I need to answer all of these emails perfectly. It's just like, I just need to do this task because it feeds into my larger purpose. And you'll feel a sense of flow when you arrive to the things that you actually need to do or want to do, rather than feeling like you have to force yourself into it because there isn't that weight on you of this is make or break, this is safety or unsafety, this is valuable or being a nobody and being forgotten about. It is no longer, the stakes aren't so high anymore. The stakes are more grounded and more individualized to you and you only. And just knowing that you can flow into and through the things you need to do in a state of calm, in a state of productivity, but in a flow state rather than a forced state is what I'm trying to get at. I hope that's making sense, but I'm gonna move on just because I feel like I'm gonna keep on tangling it. So let's talk about actual implementable tips and ways that you can stop burnout and actually find that flowy, productive state that is healthy. First and foremost, I would definitely say it is prioritize. And this is one of those things, again, that you kind of have to do from that super honest state of mind is you need to be able to prioritize things that you need to do, things you want to work on and how you want to split up your time. Now, I'm sure I don't need to say this. I'm sure it's already well known, but time and energy are probably our two most valuable resources within our lives. You cannot get time back and it's really hard to regain energy if you're not, if you're in such an overdraft, you know? So with your time and energy, you need to be able to prioritize what is worth it for you and what isn't. And when you do this, it makes it so much easier to then pick and choose what you're going to focus on and what you're going to allow to be put on the back burner or to be taken off the board altogether because you know it's just not gonna benefit you. Then you're able to just do the best with what you've got and make peace with the rest and not feel that, again, overwhelming sense of you need to do all of these things because you don't. The next tip is to become aware of your own burnout symptoms. And this is where I'm kind of at on my own little burnout journey is just noticing when I'm starting to feel burnt out. When I came back from Bali. I felt so zen. I felt so grounded. I felt so at peace. And I was so excited to just kind of come home and flow back into my life. But I had fallen behind on a few things that I had already pre-committed to. So when I got home, I accidentally, unintentionally didn't realize that I just jumped right back into the way that I was trying to be productive before. And again, I was talking to my friend Lynette and I was telling her about it and I, I was just kind of like opening up about it to her and explaining I didn't realize how deeply ingrained it was because 
I came home and got all excited about all these things and then loaded up my plate and then a couple days into being home, despite feeling better spiritually and unrelated to work, during my work hours I was like holy crap I'm overwhelmed, I'm exhausted, I'm tired, I have way too many things that I'm trying to do today and it's freaking me out and now I'm avoiding my texts again and that's always again a huge symptom of mine is that I just like avoid all existence. I'm just like, I can't talk to anybody. I have way too much stuff to do. And those are huge symptoms for me of burnout. And if I'm not careful and I'm not aware of when those things start to happen, then I will go into full fledged burnout mode and have like either a meltdown or yeah, it's usually a meltdown. So become aware of your burnout symptoms, source what your symptoms are. Maybe take a week and just pinpoint like dotted form little symptoms that you're noticing when you start to feel exhausted, when you start to feel overwhelmed, stressed, tired, or like you just can't tune into what you need to be doing. Just become aware of it and write it down without any judgment because that's going to give you such good information and feedback as to what your own symptoms are when it comes to burnout. My next tip, and this one is huge, and it's to source your actual happiness. This ties into that idea of your accomplishments are not your success. Just like what you have and own isn't your happiness. So source what your true happiness is. And I don't want to tell people what to do there, but I will say again in my own experience, which is all I can ever say, slow moments are my source of happiness. And I think that when you can really simplify the slowest, easiest, simplest things, that bring you happiness, like a morning cup of coffee, or sitting in the sun with your pet, or having a long conversation with somebody you genuinely enjoy, and little moments like that that actually fill you up with so much simple joy, those little moments of actual happiness are like medicine for burnout. So when you source what actually makes you genuinely happy, then you're able to fall back on those things or further appreciate those things, bring more of your awareness and concentration to those things when they are happening so that you can then balance out that burnout. My next tip, and again, probably the next biggest tip that I'm implementing in my own life right now is to do things mindfully. So this feeds into the whole not multitasking, at least for me anyways, because when I show up to do something and I'm trying to do three things at once, I'm not doing any of those things mindfully. I'm doing them just to get them done. And to do things mindfully is to fully experience the experience that you're having. So even if it is e emails, okay, I hate emails more than anything in the world. And when I show up to do emails, I just want to get them done. But lately I've been trying to even show up to my emails mindfully, remind my brain, okay, I know you see a lot of emails here, but realistically we only have to answer like six of them, not all 130. And mindfully unsubscribing from emails rather than just deleting them because I'm like, get out of my face. And things like that, just showing up more mindfully so that you can then relax into the moment, relax into the task at hand, but also show up and be presently aware with it because then you're gonna be able to take your time to fulfill that task. And even if it takes longer than you thought, at least you're doing it right, rather than overburning and overrunning yourself, trying to do too many things just to get them done. And then at the end of the day, you're missing that sense of accomplishment because you weren't mindful about any of it. You weren't tapped into any of it. Next is creating habits that'll prevent you from getting burnt out. For instance, kick caffeine. And this is again, only if you feel that this is an issue for you, but this was a huge issue for me. And it was such a habit that I, I honestly didn't know if I would have ever stopped. If I hadn't basically cold turkeyed myself when I went on my trip, I probably wouldn't have stopped drinking caffeine, even though I knew it was such a problem. And that to me is a preventional habit. I've created a habit out of drinking decaf drinks now because I know that that prevents me from further feeding into that anxiety, overwhelm, I need to produce, I need to work, I need to like freak the frick out right now feeling. And so preventional habits can also be going to bed earlier, having less screen time or having a, a turn off time where you literally log off of everything work and social media and you just hang out at home with your family or with yourself where you only allow yourself to pick three main goals for the day, create habits that are healthy for you that are going to help 
basically become guardrails so you don't drive back into that overdrive state. So creating any kind of preventional habit that's going to stop you or help support you from that feeling of burning out and working too much. The next one is another really important one and it's play and play in the sense of we, why did we ever think that as adults we had to stop playing? It's such an odd concept because I think that if the whole world played a little bit more like in a safe way, um, then I think that we would be a much happier world. Like playing, when you look at kids, they're never burnt out despite the amount of energy they burn up because they play and play can be work. And let's say you do have that cool book idea instead of feeling that pressure of like, oh my God, I need to like write the best book ever. I need to sell a million copies. Just play with it. Like instead think of, I just want to write a fun story or I just want to have fun while writing because it's something I enjoy. Or maybe play for you is more so I want to dance okay, right now we're all self-quarantined, but play for me, the biggest play for me is dancing at live music. Like that lifts my spirits more than anything else in the world. Or play can even be like playing with your pet or playing the guitar, playing an instrument, playing a video game even. I mean, you can play in whatever way you see fit. Let loose a little bit and give your brain the ability to take breaks. It's crazy because all of our best ideas tend to come to us when we aren't in a structured frame of mind. So when you're showering, when you're walking, when you're in nature, when you're doing something like cleaning the house, all of a sudden great ideas pop into your mind because a lot of the times you're having a little bit of fun or you're giving yourself some space to free roam inside your mind. And if you don't play, if you don't give yourself that space and that time, then you're going to constantly feel burnt out because you're trying to hyper concentrate and focus your brain all of the time without giving it any space to just play and enjoy itself. And then I only have two more quick little tips in terms of not getting burnt out. The first one is people. I just want to put so many exclamation marks beside people because I think that this is something that, again, I'm seeing with today's world that everybody has put independence on such a pedestal that you don't need anyone. You can do it by yourself. Like go chase your goals, like leave your family and friends behind and just be the best you that you can be or, you know, and, and again, I'm speaking very generically. That's definitely not the case at all all the time. I just think that from what I'm seeing and from what I've experienced in life, we don't put enough emphasis on how important it is to have healthy relationships. And that's not just loving relationships, like romantic relationships. It is so important to have many roles in your life and to play many roles in your own life as well. So you need friends, you need family, you need significant others, you need community, you need neighbors, you need to feel like you have people around you. And this is so important with burnout because if you feel like you're on this treadmill and you're alone in it and you're running like a hamster on a wheel, if you don't get off the wheel and enjoy the company of other people, your brain literally will start to think that it's the only person that feels this way, that it's the only that you're, you're going to start to alienate and isolate yourself because you're exhausted, but you also feel like you have no energy to give out to other people anymore. Again, this was a huge, huge symptom that I was noticing in myself for a while. And it was a problem because it felt like at the end of my workday, the last thing I wanted to do was like hop on FaceTime and talk to people or anything. I was just like, Oh my God, I'm so tired. I just need to go to bed. That can go like a night or two. Don't get me wrong. But when that actually starts to expand into going weeks without talking to people that you love and that are important to you, then there's a burnout problem going on there or there's a problem in general. So people are so important. Having healthy relationships, people that support you and you support them, people that just want the best for you and are able to also point out when they're noticing maybe that you're feeling burnt out and just feeling that sense of companionship and community and the ability to rely on other people. We would not be where we were today or where we are today. We would not have survived all the things that human history has survived if we didn't have each other. So even if you don't feel like you have a huge group, let me reiterate, you don't need one. In my own experience in life, I've gone through phases where I've had a lot of people around me but felt completely alone and times where I felt like I've had a few people around me and I've been fulfilled, completely fulfilled because it's about the quality of the relationships 
not the quantity. And then last but not least, it's being able to have off time. And so actually taking breaks, I already kind of talked about this, where you give your brain some time to free roam, where you log off, where you don't do work, where you allow yourself to just be and feel completely fulfilled and valued in that state of literally doing nothing. Again, I'm not very good at this, but it's something that I'm trying to learn in my own life right now where, okay, it's time to turn off. It's time to literally put all things away and just feel completely in the moment be and to just be off and yeah that's the other big one that's going to help stop the whole idea of feeling like you need to be productive 24 7 feeling like you shouldn't be sleeping feeling like that is a sign of success and passion and it's not it's a, it's a sign of unhealthy manic obsession okay if you actually want to be successful long term if you want longevity and if you want quality then start focusing on your purpose and your passions and your freedom instead of your productivity and that is that's how you'll beat the burnout so there you guys have it those are all of my tips and thoughts and tangents on burnout and productivity and how it's kind of fitting into my own life. I hope that this gave you guys a little bit of knowledge or inspiration or just some thoughts to ponder over that might bring you a little bit of insight into maybe your own experience. And if so, or if you guys wanna add anything to the topic, feel free to leave it down below. Aside from that, I'll talk to all of you guys in the next Coffee Talk. Bye guys.